Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my little kitchen. This is not a cooking show. It's really my, my opinion about life and just a blog in general about everything. Okay, so I thought I would just sit here while my dough is resting. I have to go to work today. And so I don't really have time to be playing around with my dough. And yet I am. Here I am making stromboli. Okay, so I saw a really cool video out there. I'm going to link to the recipes and the channel, how to make a Thanksgiving dinner using just the Dollar Tree products. And I I fell asleep last night watching this video because it was a lot of cooking. Um, the gal that uh, runs the channel did a complete Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, I don't think there was anything missing, but maybe at the end, I think she didn't do like cranberry sauce and she didn't do gravy. But all the regular characters that you find at your dinner table were there. As a cashier at Dollar Tree and associate, I what I found fun was I was adding up each item in my head that she was using. <laughs> and the, the total she told at the end, of course, it's in the description, but I didn't look. And... I had so much fun with it because it was the first I was right on the money. I was like, the amount of money was $75. So for $75 at the Dollar Tree, which was a lot. Um, I think what she showed in this video was that you can use Dollar Tree products and get just the same consistency, the same texture almost, and the same taste of every dish. So you don't have to go out and do a big shop. And it looked like she could feed 10 people. If there were 10 people for 75, that's not bad because she didn't get a whole turkey and she didn't get a whole ham. And I won't ruin it, but she made beautiful uh, ham rosettes. And let's see, what did she make? She made the, the regular green bean casserole, only hers was more healthy. It was from scratch, kind of. The, the, I think she used frozen maybe or... I think she used frozen green beans, but she made her own mushroom gravy. So she wasn't using like canned crap. Um, not that if you used canned mushroom soup or canned cream of mushroom, I'm calling it crap. But, you know, all that stuff is a lot of sodium. I noticed what she used was really healthy stuff. And she was able to pull it off for uh, 75 bucks. So I thought that was really cool. Um... So she had a pumpkin pie, ham rosettes, homemade from scratch stuffing. Uh, she, all the, what else? Macaroni and cheese. She made a macaroni and cheese. I would say probably, and, and she said if she just spiced it up a little bit, it would have been like your regular cheese, <laughs> you know, um, macaroni and cheese. And she baked all that in the oven. She had asparagus with bacon, uh, wrapped asparagus bundles. Uh, she had no yeast rolls that she made. Um, so her stuffing, her rolls, her mashed potatoes, I don't want to give away all the shortcut and cute things she did, but I will link to the video because I thought it was fantastic. Okay, so enough said about that. It's time for me to get some new flowers. My flowers are starting to wilt, so I'll have to remember to bring some home from work tonight. So I am making... My father's pizza dough from his pizza. <laughs> the way he taught me to make pizza dough from his pizza place years ago. And uh, I refrigerated my dough. And so it's going to be beautiful because I'm just letting it get a second rise like that. I've already got my shape of what I want. I'm just going to let it rise for about an hour at room temperature. There's no breeze here. So what I always say for my tips for dough is... Depending on the weather, depending on how you're feeling when you're rolling it out, making it, sometimes it's going to be a little boxy on you. No matter how much you stretch it, it's going to come back and it won't stretch. Let it rest. Just throw a little flour on it and just let it sit. The, the best thing for dough when it's not working out for you, any dough, bread, biscuit, sweet dough, that could be like a cinnamon roll dough or a pizza dough or a stromboli dough is 
time. So if you're trying to rush the process, if your dough is too cold, if your dough is too warm, just let it sit, get it, begin, begin the process and then let it sit and then go back to it. Don't keep like trying to stretch. (laughs) If you get a hole in your dough and you got to pinch it back together, pinch it back together and let it sit. Just let it rest. It'll naturally come back together. So, um, this recipe here is, and I've tweaked it a little bit for my liking. It's got less salt. So it's usually two teaspoons of salt per pound. Um, I do about three fourths and a quarter because I do less salt. Um, but you do need salt for the baking. You do. Um, the other thing I do is, uh, I think my dad used to use about a teaspoon of sugar to a pound. I use a little more than that. So a teaspoon and a half. And I use one and one third cup of water to about 110 degrees, like baby's milk warm. And then one envelope of active dry yeast. Um, other thing is uh, less flour really is more. And then add your flour as you need it. And then uh, if you're going to use oil, go with the extra virgin olive oil. Don't use the plain olive oil. It just doesn't work out as well. So about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil to about three and a half, four cups of flour. And then just keep some flour on the side. And I do a two-hour rise because that's what we always did. That's what I do. Um, and then if you want to like stick, if you want to let your dough rise up, punch it down, wrap it in some plastic wrap, put it back in the refrigerator. You can freeze your dough. I've got one in the freezer and one here. And I usually do this once a week when my cold cuts are getting to the edge. Like in my cold cuts say you have to use them by the 14th and today is the 14th. I'll throw them into a stromboli. I'll use up my cheeses. I've gotten there some pepperoni, some fat-free ham, and some 98% fat-free turkey. I'll just throw it in to this and then slice that up for the week. And it'll be like something, like a slice. That would be my carb. Um, And that's about it. And then I made soup, so the soup turned out really good. Okay, so let's switch conversations because I told you I wanted to tell you what I think about Donald Trump in before his presidency and what we're learning, how he's picking his staff, his cabinet, and everybody's going, oh, my God, oh, who's that? Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. And he always was going to do this. (laughs) And no, I didn't vote for Donald Trump. And when people ask me, so how are you with Donald Trump enough? Well, how are you supposed to be? You know, you don't always win. You got to learn how to just, these are things that are out of, you're in the minority. When you lose, you're in the minority. You are not the majority because the majority won. So if the majority of the people voted Donald Trump in and he won the popular vote, we have to ask ourselves why. If you find yourself on the independent uh, a party line like I am, usually going more towards progressive, liberal, or democratic, and and occasionally voting Republican. You might wonder why would so many liberal and Democrat and independents have chosen Donald Trump? Why not? We just had four years of Democrats. Did did anything go better? No. Okay. So what was the choice? Okay. So a lot of people are like, well, well, Kamala had a plan. No, no, she really didn't. No. Her plan was to counter anything Donald Trump was saying. But what I think I saw most of all is that the star power didn't work. If you bring someone like Oprah Winfrey out to endorse you and the Obamas 
and Beyonce and Jay-Z and Jennifer Lopez and every all the big names of Hollywood, Holly Weird. And that's not affecting the vote at all. It's just making them go broke with the campaign. Even people like Eminem, all these people, oh, I could say there's a few I don't like, but I, I, there's a lot of people I respect in that group. And they couldn't budge the voters. What, what it tells me is we're sick of the status quo. The majority of the country is sick of Hollywood, Holly Weird, and politics being together. Tired of them all rubbing elbows. And Donald Trump is there to shake it up. So there's going to be a, a it's going to be a shakeup or a shakedown. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. And um, things I've always thought about Donald Trump is the, I've always said I liked him when he was married to Ivana. Those years, I see a totally different Donald uh, the minute he married Marla Maples and that, from that divorce on, from the Ivana divorce to the Marla divorce to Mary Melania, he's a different man. He's, he's grown. He's changed. And he's changed his views. And I think he's very persuadable. I think you have to be when you're making deals. And so I think more than, let's say, the art of the deal, he is the art, he ha- carries the ability to be the art of persuasion. And he is, it's double. It's like he can persuade people and he is also persuadable. So he's pliable, like your dough should be. I'm thinking about that right now. Okay, so my dough is still a little cold, so I'm gonna let it sit. Um, so I mean, he is pliable. And I think. He will look at what all people want. He'll kind of see how is this working? Is it is it working? Is this deal working for all of us? And if, if it really is making more of a problem than it's worth, I think he'll change. But there's only so much you can do in four years. So I think he's going to be a two for sure. He's going to do, it's going to be two years. I, I really think people are afraid to go back and... The more Kamala kept saying, we're not going back, I kept thinking, no, we're going into an era nobody has seen before because Donald Trump is coming back and winning. Now, even when I was in the voting booth and I was going ahead and putting in Kamala, I was thinking Donald Trump's going to win. And it didn't break my heart. It didn't like, oh my God, I'm going to shiz my drawers and my heart is broken forever and I can't be around mega hat wearing crazy people that are spouting off a new conspiracy every minute. I didn't feel that way. I felt like it's going to be okay. Like we survived one Trump presidency. It's going to be okay. And maybe just let the man do what he was going to do and see where we end up. See where we end up. Now for people that are trans it's shaking up their world. But I think really what he's talking about is that children, children are very vulnerable and children want to be accepted and they want answers. They want to know why all the time. And this is why on my channel, I always talk about be careful of labels, be careful of having to diagnose everything and put meaning to everything because what you believe is the truth. What you say in your head is, is what you believe. But there are age groups that are very persuadable in a crowd. So if somebody says to somebody who's questioning their identity, their meaning, their how they fit in everything, how they feel, uh, maybe they're really sensitive to their body in action. They're, um, you know, people that are tuned into their body, they know when their heart's beating too fast, when it's beating too slow, when they feel a little overheated, everything affects them. They're almost almost like tactile stimuli, I want to say, really aware of their body running and when it's not running well. Those people oftentimes will uh, search for answers and come up with they're not really female or they're not really male or they're more than one. So when you're highly sensitive and children are, and when you want acceptance and approval from a group that's really 
maybe got your attention or you got their attention suddenly and you've never had attention. Children are vulnerable. So if if our brains are still developing past 18, but you're you're going ahead and saying, it's okay, we can do, we can start to end hormones to be more male or to be more female. We can go ahead and do some surgeries, some minor surgeries to stop this from developing and that from developing. I, I think that's all they're really talking about is wait till you're fully developed to make those decisions. I'm going to tell you a quick story about a lady I met who did not name her baby. And her reasoning was she didn't want to suggest to her child what sex that child was. And she kept referring to a baby boy as them. And this was a very educated woman who, as far as I knew, didn't have any mental illness that she admitted that she had or divulged to me or that I could see or anything. Suddenly, she has a baby, and they're naming the baby the last name only. Baby, last name. I thought, is this even legal? Can they do it? They just didn't name the baby. So I finally asked her, nobody that around her was asking her, why aren't you giving the baby a name? Nobody was asking. I mean, they were calling him Boo Baby. They were calling him Little Prince. They were calling him Mr. Gorgeous, Mr. Adorable. Nobody knew this kid's freaking name. I finally said, because I wanted to give her a gift, I said, what is the baby's name? She said, oh, we didn't name him because we don't want him to identify as male if that's not how he feels. So we're going to let him grow into his name. And I didn't even know this was possible, so get back to me, you guys. But I, I don't want to say where she lives because that would be too weird. But it's a state, <laughs> obviously, in the United States. And they were able to put baby and not put the name. So I think that's where we've gone too far. And the whole androgynous thing, like let's make um, unisex clothes, let's name our children so that they can change it to a male name or a female name. I mean, anybody can change their name and go for it. But if you start telling a child you're not, you, you may not identify with the, with the gender you were born with. And I don't think children are going to public schools and coming home with their, uh, their genitals, um, uh, you know, um, surgic surgically modified or something. That's not happening. That's a far right crazy thing that's going on. And I do not think that, um, the reason they're saying no to, oh, so many abortions is that, uh, adrenocone is being, harvested from the babies and the elite are drinking the blood. That's all QAnon and I really don't want to hear it. I will listen to people talk about it because I want to hear them go in circles and I'll be polite about it. I'll be like, uh-huh. Yep. And when I find out these people are Christian and they're Bible believing and they then say, yeah, but the Bible, they changed the Bible. Like there's an answer for everything because they're and what you believe is your truth. So you could believe a lot of crazy stuff, and that makes it true. There's a lot of crazy stuff people believe about Donald J. Trump. Some people believe he's not really, like he's he's an opposition, like he's Mossad. Some people believe he's the savior. Some people believe um, he's being used by the government, double meaning. Some people believe... Uh, He's actually an imposter, that he was switched at birth. He was had surgery. It's all QAnon. And then, um, and then there's just the, there's like, like the far right that has gone down the rabbit hole and they're covered up in tinfoil and they think they're woke. And then there's the conservative that just, they just want God in America again. That's what they want. They want God back in America again. 
They don't want the government ruling everything. They don't want Hollywood ruling everything. They don't want the media ruling everything. I think we need to listen to those people because we can see there's, there's crazy in media and there's crazy in politics. Honestly, I'm very disturbed that every time Kamala Harris was asked, how do you think Joe Biden is doing? And what was she going to say? I think he's, his health is going down. I also was disturbed at how quickly they, they got Biden out. After one debate, they said, go away, go away, Joe. Go sit down in the corner now. And we never saw Dr. Jill Biden after that because she was pissed off. She's very pissed off, and I don't blame her. So we don't know what happened to Joe, but I know that Joe Biden started going down about the time Hunter went to court. So when he was going through all of his trials, Hunter Biden in court, that's when I saw the noticeable difference in Joe Biden. And I thought, did he have a stroke? Suddenly, whole one side of his body wasn't working right. And you could see it. And he also looked like he went a little blind, like he had vision problems. So he was stammering more. I mean, it could be anything. It could be Parkinson's, could be a dementia, could be he had a stroke. I think if somebody as uh, spirited as Joe Biden has been his whole life, hot, hot, kind of sometimes hot-headed and very active, could have easily had a stroke, and it would have been covered up. Um, Ronald Reagan was in office, and he had Alzheimer's, and I, you know nobody nobody cared. Nancy Reagan was right by his side talking for him. Eleanor Roosevelt did the same thing for um, her husband. So I think, and I saw that Jill, Dr. Jill Biden was always like right by Joe Biden's son. It kind of like babies in him or the daughter was. So I really felt like the whole Hunter investigation brought him down. That's when I saw him go down. Um, and I, I was bothered by how quickly the Democrats booted him out. But I was all, the way they went about it and threw Kamala in, because I don't think she was ready um, and I think she probably did have a plan. She would have had to work hard to get that plan going that was a little bit different than Joe Biden's plan. But there was, it was a whole lot of promises. We're going to bring the groceries down, going to bring the housing down, going to go after those landlords that are buying up the monopoly block and raising the prices, and everybody's getting, I, I'm getting a $200 raise every other year, every other year where I live. It's look like $200, $200 it goes up every other year. Once in a while, it's a $25 to $35 increase, and then it's $200 again. There's nothing great that's happening. There's no updates. It just goes up. Um, but if, if one landlord is allowed to buy all the property around and raise the market value, that's what happens. So I was happy to hear that. Sure, student debt should be knocked down. But I like a lot of things that Donald Trump is saying. There's a lot of things I don't like that he's saying. A lot of scary things. He just appointed an attorney general who, uh, every time he opened his mouth, I was like, ooh, I don't like this guy. And he just appointed him. But he also just said he deliberately is putting people in that will, we're going to scratch our head and say, what are you doing? Why? Now, my thought and it's just my humble opinion. It don't mean anything, really. Um, but to my the people that wonder why I'm not angry, they're like, why aren't you angry, Donald Trump? Can I? I'm not angry. Uh, I, I, again, I put my faith in God. And all these things have to happen before God returns. So if you have your faith in God, you're not going to be worried about who's in office. You're going to continue to follow the laws of the land because Jesus, Yeshua, followed every law of the Jewish law and was crucified by the Jewish people. He was crucified by his own people, and he didn't break one Jewish law. And when asked, he said, render it to Caesar what Caesar you do, but in between, you occupy the time and you share the gospel. So... And he didn't even believe in the Jewish law. He came to end the Jewish law. This is what I'm saying. He ended the Jewish law. 
And yet he followed every law to show. I'm following all your laws. You're crucifying me anyways. Okay, so your laws don't work, but mm, here I am on the cross dying anyways. So I'm not worried about Donald Trump. I don't think he's going to be the savior. I think he's in there for a purpose. God doesn't allow anybody to lead. God will also give us our free will. So if the majority of the people want him in there, he's in there. If the majority of the people thought Hitler was great at one time, they thought um, Mussolini, oh, Mussolini, what was his name? Was that it? Whatever his name was. The Italian dude, Mussolini, I should know him, right? They they thought he was great. Then, he, then they realized, ooh, he's bad. Okay, so uh, di dictators. But I don't think Donald Trump really wants to be a dictator. I think he just has a plan. I think, I think he likes dictators. I think he wants the leadership control and admiration that they have. He likes the, ad the adoration, I want to say, that people give dictators and all the gold carpet and the, even if it's tinsel, even if it's cheap tinsel, like maybe it's dollar store, cheap gold tinsel, but it looks good. Okay. So there are people that could decorate a pig and it's still a pig. And, and to me, I've always thought the Trumps will do that. They will, they know how to make things look good on the outside. Um, he will have his gold curtains in the, in the Oval Office again. <laughs> he will have his picture of his father up and his mother and then, you know, probably his kids or whatever. I haven't seen that his kids have a place in the uh, staff of the White House yet, which I'm glad for because I think that probably killed Ivana knowing that all of her children might go to jail. I think that was a downfall in her health if somebody didn't knock her off or knock her down the stairs because I just don't think she fell down those stairs. She landed on the stairs, but I've never thought she fell down the stairs. Um, so I think really we just, for those of us that didn't vote for Trump and are scared of Trump, we need to kind of get over it. And just let the four years be. I know, that doesn't sound like we the people are rising up, but we the people spoke. And they won. And what really shocked me, I said this the other day, is, and I've talked to my neighbors, this apartment complex is largely Hispanic. Most of the people here, many are on their pathway to citizenship, and they voted for him because they left those people that he's talking about, the ones that are violent, criminal, that shouldn't be in the country, they left for that reason. So many of the people that were um, asylum seekers, I live around. And I've gotten to have good conversation with them. And they've said, no, no, it's bad. And we don't want those people. They make us look bad. So he will get out the bad people He's not coming after us. We're doing the right thing by the law. He's not against immigrants or uh, people coming over legally. The border has to be closed for a while so you can stop the bad people. So they want protection. Um, the other thing is a lot of uh, black people voted for Donald Trump because they did not they saw what happened with the economy with um, when the Obamas were in for eight years, and they didn't. They never trusted Biden uh, because he was part of that administration, and they felt um, betrayed. Some, a majority of them, by the Obama administration. So, I'm just saying that's my thoughts. Uh, Donald Trump. I know a lot of people are like down the rabbit hole with the abortions need to stop because of the adrenochrome sacrifices. I, no, the abortions need to stop because the majority of them are making money for the government. That's why. Um, the majority of abortions that are covered on Medicaid is absolutely disgusting the amount of people that are advised to terminate a pregnancy. What will happen instead is doctors will um, advise to do hysterectomy. 
So that could happen too. I don't think people that are actually looking for medical help are going to be, um, I don't think they're going to lose the medical help. There's, there's a lot more to the stories that we heard about on the campaign uh, about a woman that died um, pregnant. So I, I think that'll all wash out. I think they'll talk to doctors. It, it'll go state by state. There'll be procedures that are okay and procedures that are not okay. There'll be medication that's okay and medication that's not okay. So I think that was one situation and not the norm that really got exalted and popularized in the campaign. Uh, what else? Um, I do think other countries' leaders respect Trump more than anyone. And what I find wild is that there was not one Democrat that can take Trump down other than Joe Biden, who won four years ago in a greater amount than anybody ever in history. So after four years of Donald Trump, everybody was sick of it. They were like, okay, just give us someone else. <laughs> and that was Biden. And now four years later, everybody's like, you know what? We're sick of that too. So I'm not worried about it. I'm kind of looking at it like a fly on the wall. Like, yeah, what's happening here? That's about it. All right, I'm going to go see if this dough is, and it is, because it's already doing that, so it's good. So I'm going to go roll this dough out and get to work. Have a nice day, everyone. Take care. Bye. Share your opinions below. I am a channel where I don't care if people share their political views or their spiritual views. It doesn't bother me. I like to hear what people believe and why. Take care. Bye-bye.